Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us, joining the Spiritist Talk series promoted by the United States Spiritist Federation every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. And thank you for Yasko Arakava, who's here. And I'm just so happy to be able to, <laughs> to welcome her, to host this talk. And uh, Yasko will be discussing uh, just such a great topic, Jesus' miracles or psychosomatic healing. Let me start again. Jesus' miracles or psychosomatic healing, resilience as a psychotherapeutic tool. Before we proceed with today's talk, Yasko, I would like to, to take a moment to remind everyone in the audience today that this past Monday, April 11th, we turned two. <laughs> it has been two years since we started our Spiritist Talk series, and I just am really excited to be able to, to commemorate, to celebrate together with you today. I also would like to remind everyone that uh, we have a class called Initiation into Spiritism. It is a virtual course, and uh, each Sunday there is a new lesson released to all of us. This class, uh, available online, is free of charge. And it is meant for those who would like to learn a little bit more or review the basic principles of Spiritism, which was first published by Allan Kardec in 1857. Just a quick summary. This is a self-paced class composed of 30 lessons and eight interactive Q&A sessions. Lessons, as I mentioned before, are released weekly on Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Please take a moment to visit the course page on the U.S. Spiritist Federation website. It is www.spiritist.us. Um, and uh, if you register, you'll be able to receive the reminders by email. Tomorrow, Sunday, April 17th, the lesson will be on reincarnation. What a great topic, huh? Finally, you have uh, seen that uh, every once in a while we put a QR code on screen. If you enjoy this series of live talks, if you're able, take a moment to donate so we can develop new classes. We, we thank you. We thank you for scanning it. And uh, uh, please note that your donation will help produce future publications uh, as well as promoting spiritism to everyone. Now, back to Yasko. <laughs> Yasko, so good to have you back with us. You. Together, you know, me and everyone who's watching this live would like to give you a warm, warm welcome. We hope you're doing well. And uh, it is so good to have you here to discuss uh, this topic, right? As, uh, as I understand it, Yasko, you will visit uh, Jesus' healing uh, approach. Uh, and um, as you do so, you may uh, share with us how ther psychotherapists uh, are finding some parallels with the healing approach in uh, modern psychoanalysis. And uh, also, I believe you're going to talk about uh, the teachings, as we found in the Sermon of the Mount, on resilience, humility, faith, and how those teachings are raising questions whether Jesus performed Miracles are simply psychosomatic healings. I can't wait to hear from you. And I'm sure everyone here as well is so eager to, to hear about this important message. Before Yasko uh, starts to enlighten us in the next uh, 60 minutes or so, I would like to formally introduce her. Yasko Arkava is a biomedical researcher in the field of neuropharmacology from the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland. As a spiritist, uh, Yasko is a member of the Spiritist Society of Baltimore, SSB, and she has been involved in many different activities there to include children and youth education, outreach program, study groups, as well as giving lectures at uh, the center and 
uh, other spirit centers around the area. Just a friendly reminder, everyone, please, please, please send your questions. Use the chat window. Yasko will reserve time to address your comments, your questions once she concludes her presentation. So Yasko, please take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you again. Uh, it is a great, great honor, really, uh, to be participant of this incredible series of uh, Saturday's talks sponsored by and organized by the U.S. Federation, Spirits Federation. So for that, I'm so grateful to Tanya, Josara, João, Marcia, and all the staff that are uh, behind, even behind the scenes to make these lives available uh, to all the Spirit Center, Spirits Group around the world. This is so important that we have a kind of a unification in the propagation of the Spirits uh, Movement uh, coordinated by uh, U.S. Federation, U.S. Spirits Federation. So for that, I'm so happy, glad, thankful. Thank you very much. So today I chose this topic, uh, is Jesus miracles or psychosomatic healings? And also talk about resilience as a tool psychotherapeutic tool to manage our struggles. So Jesus, uh, in the next slide, you're going to see that the Jesus uh, miracles uh, were around 30 or so, and they came to the knowledge of Christians and non-Christians through the four evangelists. Matthew, Marcus, Mark, uh, Luke, and John. Not all the not all four actually said that all the, 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 the miracles. Some miracles were described, narrated by four of them, some by three or two of them, and sometimes only one of the evangelists. Uh, narrate uh, uh, these so-called miracles. So, for instance, we can uh, divide in like in three categories: uh, is the action, the supernatural, extraordinary actions of Jesus over what we accept at that moment as natural. So it was kind of against the natural law or the natural norms of the time. So it was uh, seen as extraordinary, supernatural. For instance, over na na nature, how come Jesus transformed uh, a water in wine in the wedding of Cana? It was actually one of the first uh, miracles that Jesus publicly performed. Then also he calmed, he was able to control the storm when the, 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 him and the disciples were caught up in the huge storm in the lake of Genesaret. He calmed down the winds, calmed down the storm, the water, etc. Also he could walk. Disciples saw him walking the, over the water. How come? You know, he should sink. Also, when he multiplied, was able to multiply five loaves uh, of bread to distribute it to 5,000 people that were at that time hungry for many days following him, and to fishes in, in many, many people. And also, he pointed out a place in the lake that uh, the, the, the fishermen could find a great amount of fish was called the great fishing. So all of these were seen as miraculous, a power, divine power more than 
the nature. So the next group is over uh, uh, what we call resurrection, over death. So also was seen as very miraculous, like when Lazarus, the brother of uh, Mary and Martha, was dead and buried for three days, and he actually has to remove the, 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 the stone that served to close the, the tomb and demand uh, Lazarus to walk out. And he walked out. And so they said, but he was dead for three. No, he wasn't dead. He was Or uh, the son of the widow of Nain, that who in, during the funeral procession, uh, he, Jesus found him and the mother was crying. So he said, no, he's not dead. Wake up, stand up. Or the Dora, 12 years old, Dora of Jairus, that was administrator of the synagogue, that people were crying that she was already dead. And he said, no, she's just sleeping. So today we, we see this as a state of catatonic state that the people at that time could not uh, uh, identify the real death. So was considered dead and many were buried even alive. And the, uh, uh, the miraculous uh, resurrection was his own resurrection. Oh my God, when he appeared three days after his crucifixion, what we're going to celebrate today, tomorrow, oh, wow, he was dead. We saw him at the cross and now he comes vivid, alive, many times to many people in steps. But the healings, uh, the control of uh, the miracles that, uh, if you see the next series, his power over the illness and the, the action of some demons was really uh, attract a big, large crowd. Because at that time, at time of Jesus, because of the ignorance about the causes of this illness, and also because of the very poor sanitary conditions, many of these illnesses mostly were leprosy, blindness, or the woman that was suffering with organic bleeding for 12 years, or the paralytic one that was, you know, uh, they were, he was cured, or some uh, obsessed, possessed by the demon, by the low level spirits, like the woman that was curved. He, she, she was able to stand up, straight up with Jesus' uh, uh, talk, demand to the demons, to the spirit that is obsessors to get out from her or from the, the boy that was having the epileptic uh, seizure. So all of these were considered completely miraculous, uh, 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 miraculous acts of Jesus. So they said, well, Jesus, oh God, oh his God, perform this um, against the law actions. That was not against the nature, against the what we call norms. So must be something uh, divine, or when they want to 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 crucify him, they decide to classify these actions as from the devil, from the evil. Also, that they at that time believed that uh, the evil uh, power also could make those out of natural uh, actions. But then, of course, we ask, uh, it really was miraculous, miracle healing, or was a psychosomatic cure? Today, we know that the mind, 
uh, the sentiments, uh, the emotional struggles can make something crazy to our physical body. So I ask, we ask, how the society treated people, low class people, and especially women of that time having health conditions. Were they understanding people? Were they accepting the, the authority of that uh, time that was the Roman Empire ruling plus the Pharisees, the religious authorities oppressing, putting their severe ruling over these strange, unusual conditions, especially health conditions that included blood. They were very, blood was very much uh, something that they didn't want. They was considered dirty. So blood, mucus, some fluids coming from the body or skin problems that could, those that could, they knew it could be propagate, be contagious to other people. They, the, the, the priests that were um, responsible for the sanitary control, they knew. So they put a label of religious label to say, this is against our religious uh, guidelines, Moses law or something of this sort in order to, to have the people obeying their, their rules. So we, we I, 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 let's pick up this case of this woman. What happened to this woman if as a woman, I don't know if I pass uh, the next, but as a woman, woman of that, women of that time, they didn't have in a male uh, rude society, even the, the civil society or the religious society have no rights. They were considered uh, items, possessions of, uh, of the male, the family. If the woman was um, a single, she belonged to the father authority. She was a item almost. If she get married, she now belongs to the husband. If she get the husband dies, now someone has to take responsibility. A male figure has to take responsibility. Usually a brother or an uncle, someone Otherwise, she would be thrown out the street or be an outlaw in the society. So this woman, imagine that this woman was having these female, so-called female issues. Uh, that is... Um, period, menstrual period, uh, bleeding. So the society at that, that time said, look, woman in that stage, in that period, or when she was pregnant or delivered a baby, she uh, could not be touched by anyone. She could not touch anything. And she also had things that she would touch, material thing has to be thoroughly washed, cleaned. If it cannot be cleaned, has to be discarded. That's how she was put out in a corner, could not get out from the house. So this woman was in continuous uh bleeding so she was ostracized for that society and also so she she said well so when she heard that uh, uh, jesus was passing by 
uh, that area. It doesn't need to be that she was just living uh, in that street, in that road. No, she had probably had to come to that place, made an effort. And while she's crawling there, you know, the uh, Matthew Ma uh, or Mark says, this is Mark's description, description says, and the woman was there who had been subject to bleed for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, not that she didn't try to be cured, to be treated. So she, she tried all doctors and had spent all she had, money, possession, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him inside this crowd underneath trying to see. Say, and she said to herself, if I just touch the fringe of his robe, I know I can be cured. I can be healed. So she did. And she had to be this secretive because of the law. If they find that she, in that state of uh, uh, bleeding, she touched someone, she would make that person impure. In this case, Jesus. So if she will be caught, it would be a big commotion because this, she, was on, she was against the law. So when Jesus, so her bleeding stopped and Jesus said, who, touched me, she was completely scared because she was doing something uh, against the law. So, and then he, uh, Peter said, oh, master, but there's so many people around. How could you say that? Who touched you? Everybody's touching. No, someone touched me in a different way because of virtue and vital energy get out from my body. So she was getting so afraid, but she said, that's me. But my bleeding stopped. And then he said, well, your faith healed you. Go in peace, my daughter. So, so now I ask, I don't know if the, the, the next, um, I ask the, the, the following. I think that is, yes. We uh, ask whether this is a psychosomatic, uh, uh, was a psychosomatic disorder. Because this woman was under such a pressure for so long, so undermined, so with low self-esteem. So we, we ask, was this Jesus acceptance welcoming a therapeutic uh, healing for her. So at that time, uh, for from that time and even to this century, uh, all these women issue, physical, mental, psychological, was classified in what they call hysteria. So hysteria uh, was a uh, uh, was uh, mostly a women issue, a female issue. You don't call a male issue a hysteria. It's all about women. And they usually is, is, is from, uh, uh, they classify well, as a psychological imbalance of that woman or something. So it was very negative. So, uh, uh, the oppression, we all know, all the people, especially the sick, the poor, was under a big deal because of these religious, political, cultural prejudices. But this, this term stays until 20th century. And many known psychologists, Freud, Charcot, that they dedicate the study of the women of that time to treat to understand hysteria and to, uh, to treat hysteria. They always think, thought, like especially Freud, everything was 
somewhat related, especially for female uh, patient, related to suppressed sex desire. So because they could not express their sex sexuality like the men, all these were consequence of uh, this uh, psychological problem was was consequence of this suppression oppression uh, that that Freud thought about, but later it was not exactly like this. Only in 1968, his hysteria was abolished from the medical uh, manual and terms because it was considered pejorative, was considered prejudiced and fallacious. It was not correct to say, attribute every psychological female problem to their uterine pathology. So there is this uh, 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 a very big diagnostic uh, uh, category, diagnosed in the statistic manual of mental disorders that, uh, that categorize all these mental and psychological problems. And uh, what this paper said that what could be very parallel what hysteria was, according to now to this manual was what is called conversion disorder is is one of the somatoforms so somatoform psychosomatoform disorder disorder and is now diagnosable as a mental illness and look at that can cause limbs paralysis blindness, chronic pain, amnesia, dementia, hallucinations. Look, all these physical problems, Jesus healed in his time. So look at that. Now, 20th century, this conversion, conversion disorder, it can, exp can also identify all these illness of, the, of Jesus' time. And they say, medicine of 20th century, after Thoreau, laboratory, neurological, radiological tests, no clear organic or physical cause found. You see, even today it's not found. It's more commonly triggered by the body's reaction to psychological trauma and stressful events. Oh, all these psychological traumas, stressful events, those people, low, the, the normal class, not the high priest, they were subject to this oppression, to this stressful situation because of the religious and political ruling of that time. But importantly, physical injury, infection, migraine, panic attacks might also trigger this conversion disorder. So it can be the other way around. Isn't it so interesting that the, 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 med, the modern medicine is now reaching out to explain this psychosomatic, we say psychosomatic, because the psychic state can reflect in the physical, which is the somatic part. Somatic component is the physical part, right? So, um, so now I ask, <clears throat> we ask, well, so we have this scenario. Jesus, the modern science, Medicine is kind of, uh, uh, how to say, accepting, explaining in more uh, uh, or scientific means. But what is Spiritism? How is Spiritism explains Jesus' miracles? So this is 1800 after Jesus, right? So let's see. In this book, Genesis, miracles, predictions, according to Spiritism, part two, three chapters, 
talk about miracles. Miracles. So Kardec, now he's trying to bring the spiritist point of view to explain. And in the end, he wants to prove it to, to make us accept that there is no miracles. Everything is under the natural laws, either physical laws or spiritual laws. So in this chapter 13, he talks about the characteristics of the miracles. And of course, he starts to define what miracle means. And he says, etymologically, miracle comes from mirare, admire. That means miracles, means admirable, something extraordinary, surprising. But the academy or the dictionary defines as miracle as an act of divine power, contrary to known laws of nature. Theologically, church, the church says, miracle is a derogation from the laws of nature through which God manifests the divine power. So the church, it, up to today, wants to and demands to miracle being still accept as a divine law, all those events. And if I decide to ask, no, I have an explanation, or like uh, 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 Galileo said, I have an explanation for that event, for that uh, 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 phenomenon. It's not a miracle. It can be explained by uh, law, can be reproduced. I can put in mathematical forms. I can put in observations, statistics, etc. No, the church will say, you are committing a heresy. This is not, this is a divine phenomenon. It cannot be explained by, by, by natural. It's not natural. And for that, if you insist, no, it is natural. It's not divine. The church would excommunicate you and put on the to, to be burned at stake, well, many did. Many found this end to their uh, conviction for that conviction. And more, this up to today, to be, a, uh, how to say, canonized as saints in the Catholic Church, first has to be Catholic. Sec, one of uh, the other one be a very, uh, 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 um, good per person, but it has to have performed miracles, some kind of phenomenon, healing, whatever, that is, could not be explained by natural law, has some supernatural divine uh, power there involved, up to today up to today. Okay. So once the, 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 no, no, before, uh, once the, 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 the phenomenon is, can be, is explained, there is no miracle. Also to be a miracle, it has to be unusual, isolate and exceptional. So if the science or in the laboratory or the observation of the sky, we say this can be reproduced. Therefore, it's subject to some law, some physical law. It can be known or unknown law, law. It's no longer a miracle. Because if you can reproduce, there is a law behind this. So it's not considered a miracle anymore. So in order to be a miracle, it has to be was unusual, isolated, exceptional. Once it's reproduced, 
no miracles. So the science with the development of science, the things that happen in the material realm, because the scientists, they fortunate, unfortunate, they don't uh, deal with other than the material realm. And all the tools, technology is directed to unveil, to study, to analyze things, material phenomena. So, uh, uh, and also using our five senses, only our five senses. So we develop technology to enhance, to amplify my capability to, to see either very tiny ones, microscopic or macroscopic with the telescope or the lenses. So, but still is with my, my eyes or the, 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 the olfactory, the smell, if I can enhance capability to, to sense uh, the presence of few molecules, etc. So once they started to, to, to put under the law because of the experimentation of the observation of the cosmos, for instance, it's no longer a miracle. It's no longer a miracle. So the, the, the amount of miracles related to, to, to material realm is start to shrink. For instance, before every, all the ancient people were amazed about the lightning during storm. And they put the, even the divine or evil force behind that. They worship those. Today, we know how it happens during the lightning, during the storm. We know that uh, the, uh, the storm is, is also beneficial. It can clean the air, can have a ozone type of uh, cleansing because of the, 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 light, the high power energy or the aerodynamics of the aerodynamics law that put that can put heavier than the air uh, objects in the up in the air there is a law behind and they uh, use that in order to improve more and more uh, heavier objects and put them on the on the, the air or um for instance, um, some cures also, we, all, we already know, we're going to see later, uh, that, uh, that um, let me see more example here. So uh, what else, the aerodynamics, uh, oh, this train of levitation. Uh, if you go a little bit before uh, the levitation, everything uh, when when the first time the tables started to uh, to be lifted and uh, they didn't know was who, who was what energy was lifting these tables in during the cadet time, you know the levitation. Today we understand we can put above the trail the track. All those heavy trains, you know, you know the, the, this system called mag, maglev or something like that, that the, 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 the train levitates a little bit above the track, so the friction is, is nothing. So they can reach a, a, a speed of 500 kilometers per, you know, per hour or something never thought before. But there is a law, there is a magnetic, there's some elements, chemical elements with magnetic power that when manipulate can lift by, uh, by uh, um, uh, how to say, repulse uh, and not touch the, 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 the trail. So we all these things are a shrink, all these miracles in the spiritual world. But in the, the spiritual phenomena, this, the science did not tackle so much. It was not in their radar. 
and because they they're not in the radar they are they don't want to and they decide that doesn't exist or like Kardec says is is that not only that they don't uh, 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 want to, to to study to analyze, but by not accepting, they kind of get blind. They get and they start to uh, to talk uh, to call other people that comes like spirits with the rational explanation, like you know something that we are uh, in not a good. Uh, state of mind or nothing to be uh, taken seriously. But ch things are changing. Things are changing slowly. So let's see now uh, next um, next uh, slide. Um, why there is an a, a item in this uh, chapter that say Spiritus does not perform miracles because we are the spirits are the ones that now knows and deal most thoroughly and routinely about the spiritual phenomenon through the mediumship and we have uh, like kardec gave us this uh, uh, uh doctrine based on rational analysis to all experimentation to see if it was reproducible, all those things that uh, the spirits were uh, answering uh, about the, the question made to the mediums. So let's see why spiritism does not perform miracles. We cannot accept these things that people outside of spirit and says, oh, this is a miracle. This is a divine action, divine uh, power. No, we cannot because we have all this information that I'm going to list below. So we have no right <laughs> to, be, to, 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 to be ignorant. First, we are spirits. Not all people accept. We are all spirits in both realms, either incarnate, transiently, or mostly either discarnate. This is incarnate or discarnate. There is a misspelling there. So we are spirits. First of all, we accept that. We are immortal spirits in constant evolution towards angelitude, from the very ignorant stage to the pure angelical stage reincarnating we accept reincarnation multiple times in various conditions sex place planet systems outside of earth etc so prejudice among the spirits it will blow down i cannot say wow i'm against oh wow you woman no i was a woman before or oh, i was a man before I was also born in Africa. I was also born in Asia. That is just why. Third, we have a pair spirit, a spiritual body in both states, as a discarnate or incarnate, in various density, refinement, subtlety, according to my stage of purity. Jesus, being the most pure being, lived in earth. So his very spirit was the most ethereal and the most powerful and capable, we're going to see. The very spirit served as a body for the spirit to express its thoughts, desire, will, emotions, intentions, bad or good. Bad or good. So is the spirit that has all these bad or good emotion, desire, thoughts, etc., but needs the, the, the perispirit to express this and to pass to the uh, physical body if it's uh, incarnated, it is in incarnate states. 
and serve the pair spirit also serves as the link to the physical body during incarnation and act upon matter so the spirit either discarnate or incarnate can manipulate act upon the matter through the pair spirit more evolved more capable the spirit will be to manipulate what we later we're gonna call the universal cosmic fluid jesus was the utmost powerful uh being could manipulate and he made even uh, 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 the planet earth so why not other things that are much smaller we are spirits an infinite degree of evolution and accordingly infinite states and subtlety of spirits and physical body for the world that we are in. So we had also a very rough physical body before. We are refining the physical body too, not only the spirit, the peri-spirit. The spirit has evolved, it changes the spirit and the physical body. We can communicate with discarnate spirits. Look at that. And with the particular ones, if we have the merit. Well, we were also informed with lots of uh, books, even Kardec, but beyond Kardec, Andre Louis series about the spiritual world. The houses, hospitals, schools, course that, that we have that is there. And we can participate and go there and experience this world, spiritual world, during emancipation. We accept that we can detach, emancipate from the, the physical body during sleep, during dreams, in, in a waking state during trance. We accept also, number eight, we have a vital magnetic energy that we can use during passes, prayers. We understand how passes and prayers work because we are made of vital magnetic energy, all beings. With the age, of course, of the high spirit uh, to achieve the mental and physical healings. But this is also how we are prepared to connect with the high spirits, to exchange these vital fluids. Nine, we understand about second sight that was considered miraculous, be corporate. Euripides Barsanufo, that emancipated from, left his body in the class and went to, 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 to rescue, to, to deliver a baby far away. Saint Anthony of Padua also, and for that uh, he was canonized, you know, that he was in Italy, then he went to Portugal to save his father in a trial. So Jesus, of course, was the most powerful person that could do whatever he wants, be corporate, second sight, uh, manipulate all the matter. Number 10, the apparition, materialization, is not the miraculous anymore. We understand about the ectoplasm. It's a vital energy, like, like the blood. Blood is made from the physical body, donated by the physical body and then manipulated by the spirit. Either a different class of, of uh, spirits for do perform uh, healing, apparition, etc. And we understand by the same ectoplasm, levitation, moving tables. So nothing anymore is miraculous. It's all like Kardec says, natural phenomena. Next. So next, um, we talk about fluids that is very important because fluids now is, is what is manipulated and be uh, a source of healing. 
So universal fluid is a primitive element we all know of both corporeal and the perispirit, which are merely transformation of it. So everything that is in the material per and the perispirit except for the spirit is made by a uh, universal fluid, which is the primitive element. So how, so how the healing is performed, occur according to spiritists? It says, by the very nature of this fluid condensed in the perispirit, condensed in the perispirit, this fluid can supply, it can be supply reparatory elements to the body. Reparatory elements of the body. The driving healing agent is the incarnate or discarnate spirit. I can do my own healing if I concentrate and, uh, and make some exercise. So the driving healing agent is the incarnate or discarnate spirit that injects a portion of the substance of it, its fluid envelope into a deteriorating body. So is a flow of the healthy to an unhealthy one. The healthy molecule substituting the unhealthy molecule. The health cell uh, uh, substituting the unhealthy molecule. Well, today we know all stem cells, stem cells therapy is based on this. You know, the transplant of med medulla, also, the bone, bone marrow is this, is to, to replace the healthy ones to the unhealthy ones. But the, I can, in very more routine way, with certain exercise, boost my own stem cells and heal myself. Today, still, we have to, to, to implant, to inject some embryonic uh, stem cells, which is not well accepted. But anyway, we can boost, learn to boost all those stem cells and uh, heal with my own cell, replacing the unhealthy by the healthy one. The curative power is thus the direct result, the purity of the substance injected. So, it's not all good, it can be more or less, more or less because of my state of mind or the healer mind, the healer uh, prop, uh, power. Jesus had the most pure, powerful substance. It also depends the energy of, uh, uh, of the will. So who is doing the things? If the one that is distracted, we call <laughs> weak healer <laughs> or very strong healer. And also depends on the intention of who wants to be healed. If uh, the person stays sitting there but doesn't care, he's not going to be healed. Like Jesus said, your faith healed you. Go and no sin anymore. So it depends on my moral transformation after that uh, healing uh, session. The fluids that emanate from impure source are like adulterated medical, medicinal substance. The same way we have not good medical drugs, also those, those source of energy, uh, the energy also can be, you know, poor quality. So finally, it depends on patient's desire to be healed. So that is all explainable now, you know, and we all see uh, that uh, something that before or oh, people outside the spiritists can see as miraculous, not any longer. We spiritists know and know how to improve the results. It's all here, it's all in the heart. Okay, so... Next, um, so in this chapter 14, uh, there's many things uh, that Kardec, Kardec also goes uh, through many, many, many uh, all those um, miracles, miracles 
Uh, but one thing that caught my attention was to consider he talks a lot about the superiority of Jesus' nature. We have to accept we're going to reach his state. But Jesus was special. So the, he says the superiority of Jesus was not linked to his body, but to his spirit, to his perispirit that was quintessential, very pure. So that's why he was able to heal thoroughly. Oh, and also foreseeing that with the second side, he could uh, warn or something that something else would gonna happen in in future. So they say the quality of the, uh, we said already, the quality of the fluid in, endowed, uh, endowed him with immense magnet powers, second by his incessant desire to go to do good. So we have to reach to uh, Jesus' state. Next. Um, next I see. Now let's see what medicine, just to, for curiosity, what the, the mainstream uh, uh, medicine is today. We know a lot of chemicals, neurochemicals. Oh, we have these happy chemicals, uh, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, endorphin, all good ones, make us happy, uh, diminish our pain. Oxytocin is the nurturing, loving, when we are in the loving state and uh, happy, content with ourselves, oxytocin is I, when I am in a state of compassion, oxytocin is high. That's how that woman of 12 years uh, of bleeding, she got a cure because she got all these good uh, 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 chemicals. And we know oxytocin in the uterus makes a contraction because it's a, neurochem it's a chemical that is present during delivery to contract the uterus then to expel the fetus. So of course, by contracting uh, uh, the uterus, the bleeding stops. So we can even explain by physical means, more also by psychological state that improves so much that she was healed. But also we have a bad, to the right, bad stressful neurochemical, depends on our state of mind, cortisol, adrenaline, adrenaline that it is triggered by fatigue, chronic uteric fatigue, chronic stress. It's a very bad one that we have to get rid of it. We know a lot about mental illness. The neurochemical background of these mental illnesses, how to treat, that's how we have so many drugs for treating anxiety, depression, uh, uh, um, schizophrenia, et cetera, et cetera. But, there is something important, placebo effect. This is known for a long time. That if we believe we are taking a powerful medicine, even taking a sugar pill, we can be cured. 30% or more of the cases showed placebo effect. The patient was not receiving the drug that she or he believed was received. That's just a sugar pill. So what is behind the placebo effect? Was this mental state that changed the trust that now is healing my physical illness, psychosomatic illness. And also a very important development is what is called epigenetics. We're not any longer subject to the genetic uh, slavery. Well, I'm born, my father, my, my grandfather, my grandparents had this, so I'm going to have. Not, not necessary. Because depends on my state, here is psychological state, social interaction, uh, food, the quality of diet, exercise, 
microbiome quality. All this behavior, containment, this is change the environment around the cells and the, the, that uh, defect, that uh, uh, defect not, but tendency, genetic tendency is not expressed because now genetics know not all what is in the DNA is expressed. It depends on these factors. There is a potential probability, but not a necessary condition. So lifestyle medicine is getting to be very important in the future. It's starting slowly today. Okay, so, so you see that we are walking slowly, the medical, the mainstream is slowly about, it's still pretty much treating the effect, not the cause. The cause which can be in the spirit, in the peri spirit, no, they don't want to see this whole being. Is this still difficult for them to accept? Medical uh, school is having slowly uh, is teaching alternative medicine, uh, complementary medicine, lifestyle medicine, but they are far, far, far from treating the spiritual part background of all beings because they don't accept what we accept what spiritism says right once they accept they're gonna uh th this research we're gonna boost and all the spiritual phenomena that they consider uh miracle it's not miracle anymore it's not it's like what is happening to electricity etc so I decide to talk about resilience as a psychotherapeutic tool because what I notice that many of these uh, uh, Jesus uh, teachings, especially in the Sermon of the Mountains, talk about a lot about humility, but it's not that humility that you stay passive there. Resignation that you have passive there is waiting for. No, resilience. What resilience means is the capability to be able to bounce back. So you, you press or press, but I'm able to stand up. It's like this bamboo uh, 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 trunk that, you know, the wind comes, it goes with the wind, but it comes after the strong pass, it comes back to the straight position. It doesn't break. So it's the capability to bounce back when we have been bent and stretched out of shape. And so many times we have been. When the storms of life, trials, challenges, comes at work or in a relationship, instead of wallowing and letting things keep us down, we get back up and continue on with our life productive. American Psychological Association says resilience is a process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, stress. That's how Jesus taught. Jesus taught, look, you bounce back. You will Succeed, go and no sing anymore. See all the routes. So did Peter, Simon Peter. Wow, it was a low, low state when he's, he denied Jesus three times. And Jesus looked at him with this understanding look. Didn't I tell you that you would deny me? So the first moment he whipped, he was so upset with himself. But what he did, he bounced back and became the Simon Peter to direct all those younger disciples, the followers of Jesus. 
So did Paul of Tarsus. He was, he, he, he killed, he assassinated Stephen. He did that, he stayed there crying forever. No, he bounced back. He did his great job. Without him, we won't have Christianity in the Western society. Today, we have Nelson Mandela. Resilience during apartheid fight, Stephen Hawking, overcoming or trying to control or deal with his uh, uh, disease, Viktor Frankl, during the Holocaust. We have many of this, right? So what is resilience? Next um, slide. Uh, we see that there's many domains of resilience I thought was interesting. Physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Just look at that. Physical. Physical flexibility, endurance, strain, strain. Mental. Mental flexibility, attention span, ability to focus, incorporate multiple points of view. We have to practice this. In order to build up resilience, we just build this kind of uh, 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 trait or properties or, uh, uh, of our mental uh, part, emotion, emotional. Be emotional, flexible, positive outlook, self-management. Don't give up on ourselves. Spiritual flexibility. Commitment to values, change, inner transformation, tolerance of others' values and beliefs. Accepting. Jesus did all the time this. He enticed everyone to do so. Don't be so harsh, Matthew, Levi. Why are you condemning? Next. So we, we, uh, we know... Uh, if you pass through other things, we can pass on. So we have, no, no, uh, before. The positive attitude. We have to have positive attitude. That's what resilience, one of the component is. Positive attitude. We, the positive person acknowledge the reality is not, is not the illusion, illusionary. But it looks to the good of life. Good part. Optimism. Resilient people continues to hope that things will get better. Not always expecting the worst. There are many people that expect always the worst. Ability to manage emotions. Resilience involves capability to take ownership of your feelings and control them. Yourself, ourselves, not others. Don't put others. Uh, blame other people, circumstance, etc. Take hold of your uh, uh, situation. Seeing failures as he helpful feedback. This is good. Instead, you know, be la 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 la. Nye, nye, nye. What can I do better next time? What can I learn from this? It's what Jesus taught us all. Okay, next. I think we are. Have to wrap up. Okay, so this book very quickly uh, is called Resilient: uh, Your Invitation to a Jesus-Shaped Life. Uh, this is also a DVD series. I, I I I listened to them. This guy was passing through a very bad familial problem, and he said, "I got. Let's see what Jesus can help me." And he decided to read every day for one month the Sermon of the Mount to see if he could extract something to help then that went to two months three months so he advised us to do the same he says you will find there the healing the the way to get out from your problem your resilience is up boosted and so here i put at least the four beatitudes what jesus did he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Poor of spirit. Not the few that are poor in, in, in appearance. No. 
those that are humble, resilient, willing to stand up. Those that mourn, they have sensibility because of mourning, but I will be comforted. The meek, not the one that is very proud, I'm the best. No, the meek will inherit the earth. In the, the, the planet of uh, regeneration is not place for those that are very obnoxious, uh, petulant. No, not anymore for the meek. Those that hunger for, thirsty for righteousness, justice. We are the ones that are going to uh, be blessed because we see the injustice that hurts us. And we want to change that. First in ourselves, change our view of judging people, not to be so harsh, right? So that's what I wanted. Uh, I don't know if I have more. I don't think so. Uh, do we, um, next? Uh, you can pass it just to show that up oh, the before just to show that today's therapy is reaching we uh, we can discuss during during the, the the questioning that the the modern therapy is getting to Jesus methodology slowly saying that well what he taught 2000 years ago we finding out is the way to treat our patients thank you Thank you. Thank you, Yasko. I think uh, this is such a rich, rich um, information, right? Uh, we could go on and on for Sorry, hours. it was a little long. <laughs> no, it's okay. No need to be sorry. I think we have uh, a few minutes uh, of questions uh, uh, just uh, before we close today. So let me see if we can have anyone. So Violet, hi, Violet. Thank you. Thank you for uh, putting the question below. Um, Yasko. How can we acquire the state of mind of the women with faith? Yes, it takes time. Uh, we, uh, we first start, we don't believe that. I may not be, uh, deserve it. Uh, we start first to jeopardize, sabotage ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the first inclination. But we'll reach one time that uh, either we are permeable to some kind of inspiration from the above, because the faith is there. We just have to be, right. you know, boosted and let it appear. So this woman, we asked, why didn't she do in the first year? So why 12 years? Why so many There was a time that she said enough is enough i did what was in my uh my power i went to to, to this doctor i did i heard and someone whispered there's a guy there it can help you it can be other person goes to that spirit center man you went to chico and you went to divaldo right Suddenly that faith, that courage, that is mix of courage comes. I'm gonna take actions unusual before uh, uh, seen as impossible. We take this unusual action. And she decided to do that. And we, you're gonna say, we're gonna see many people doing this. They can, they have to get out from the same behavior change it there how but it needs to build up it needs to build up and faster we go if we accumulate knowledge and experience in the correct way in not in a negative way that would put our uh potential or, or chance to to build up the faith much lower no we have to do the correct way look for correct situation yeah, I agree with you, uh, Violet. I hope that uh, your question was answered. I think it's uh, it was in your last slides, right? The the idea of what's the patient, how to best get to that point to be able to be healed. Let's see if we have one final question. 
Yeah, from Hi Violet again. So uh, Violet is asking a second question. Uh, Yasko, she's saying, how can prayer specifically be used as psychotherapeutic tool? Great question. Thank you. Yes, very great question, Violet. As you said, because we are, we have, we made with this uh, vital magnetic fluid, all beings in different stage, more or less, more powerful or less powerful, but we all have this uh, magnetic vital fluid that we can exchange, depends on our mind, the purity, the truth, truthful of our intention when we are praying. Not that say, oh, do I have a merit? No, we all have the merit. Just we have to trust. I have, but also I am humble. I am humble to say, look, God, look, mentors, look, whoever, I need your help. I am here prepared to accept, but please help me in this situation. Help my, my kid, help my baby, please. I am here to asking you and willing to accept and to do whatever it's necessary. It's this willingness to change that I think makes our prayer a psychotherapeutic tool because many of our conditions at least is worsened by our psychological state mentors. Otherwise, the Heike or the passes or the, uh, you know, all this, all the alternative uh, medicine won't have an effect. But we know we have effect. Yes, you know, truly, and the truly. explanation how we boost our vital fluid. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Yasko. So we have some uh, comments here and that's uh, thanks for sharing this interesting study of how physical problems routinely healed by Jesus can now be identified as those triggered by one's reaction to psychological trauma. So uh, I myself could say, Yasko, very, very good uh, connections that you brought to us today, right? And I hope everyone who's uh, on the live uh, talk today can can also see that right that the things are all somatized by our own psychological trauma therefore healing is is part of the psychotherapeutical therapeutic tool i can't speak today sorry <laughs> i was so amazed when i read yeah. about this conversion uh, mm -hmm. disorder how powerful is our mind our trauma psychological yes. trauma to cause a, a, a really severe physical impairment, yes. limitation, paralysis. Well, we know that suddenly, well, the person had this uh, lost someone and now she can or he cannot walk anymore. We hear about this, you know, suddenly the person starts go downhill, downhill and eventually die, you know. And kids that has this uh, another brother be born, he suddenly uh, doesn't want to walk anymore because he sees that the attention is going to the baby. Yes. And wow. I would say, Yasko, the other component of it is I'm thinking, as I hear your words and uh, the words from this comment, is that uh, we, especially now, after two plus years of a pandemic, right, uh, we're all very vulnerable to some psychological trauma. So on one hand, we are vulnerable and it's good to recognize that. On the other mm -hmm. hand, it's important to recognize that faith, right? Faith exactly. and, and understanding our connections with the divine can heal us. It is, once, it is within uh, us, yeah. right? Yeah. Once you accept and wants to bounce back, Mm -hmm. We try to, to boost our faith, but also in an active way, you know, trying to find different alternatives. Mm -hmm. 
That's, that is what is be resilient. That's what made the difference between Simon Peter that bounced back and, and became the head versus Judas. Judas. Yes. Judas also betrayed, quote unquote, like Peter felt Jesus betrayed Jesus. But what happened to Judas? He did he was not resilient. He committed suicide. There is very, very good uh, uh, here. Just, just really important for us, Look right? Look at that. So, it was the same situation. Yes. And yes. he was in his, his state as a wow. spirit. Look at that. Absolutely. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So uh, everyone who is here listening to this talk, I want to say, Thank you for being here. Thank you, Yasko. We have uh, come to the end of our talk today, and uh, I appreciate your questions, you, your you. your comments, right? Thank and I just wanted to to let everybody know that uh, hi, Christina. Next Saturday, April thirtieth uh -huh. at eleven a.m. Eastern. Don't miss our next live talk with Marcelo. Uh, Ana Moreno, I'm sorry. I, I thought I had a different one. So Ana, I think this is, yes, I'm sorry. I had uh, the 30th. So Ana Moreno, my apologies, everyone. Ana Moreno will be talking about searching for the meaning of life. And uh, I'm really excited to, to be able to hear from her on, on that uh, such an important topic. As uh, we are about to, to, to end this live today, we'd like to just remind everyone that, uh, as you know, the U.S. Spiritist Federation has released the virtual course, Initiation to Spiritism, which is delivered weekly, free of charge. And it's really catered to anyone who is interested to either start to learn about Spiritism or those who want to to go back and review those uh, basic principles. Tomorrow, specifically, 10 a.m., we have a new lesson, and that lesson will be focused on reincarnation. The lesson will be uh, released at 10 a.m. Eastern, and if you're interested in, re in uh, registering and getting reminders via email, go to www.spiritist.us, and you can do that very easily. I would like to ask Yasko to say a prayer before we end today. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. So uh, let's all together concentrate our mind, our heart to the above, to the high spirituality, to God, our Father to Jesus Christ, our brother, model, guiding model, all our mentors, guardian angels, to first be so grateful to all of them, especially to God, that out of his mercy allowed us so many opportunities in different incarnations to redo what we did badly before, to develop or amplify our virtues still so weak, patience, tolerance, vanity, pride, selfishness, please God. Please, mentor, help us to be more vigilant in our relationship with others, with our family members, neighbors, and to ourselves to be more kind to ourselves, not to be so harsh. Please help us to get the best direction, especially in moments, the cross road, to take the best decision, for us to be aware of your presence in all 
times. We also ask you to help and protect this planet, especially in places where we have all this conflict among brothers, the disease, the bad sanitary conditions like in Africa, for us to be aware, to put our heart, our mind to work for them. For all the ones that have the authority over people to be kind, to be compassionate, to be generous. Thank you so much for this incarnation, the experience we have with the spiritism, learning the primitive, the original teachings of Jesus and also to put in more rational way. Thank you so much for all the opportunities given to us. Thank you, and so be it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a, a blessed Easter Sunday tomorrow.